Hey yo, what is up guys? So for today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a quick rundown on how to properly install NVIDIA drivers. So to get started, you're going to need to download this NVIDIA driver pack, link in the description below. It's going to be originally in a um, 7-zip file, so just download 7-zip, I'll have that in the link uh, description below, or WinWAR, uh, either one works. Personally, I recommend 7-zip, um, it's lighter and just uses less resources. But anyways, um, so yeah, just go ahead, unzip it, uh, drag it to your desktop. These are the files we're going to be working with today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we do a clean install of our NVIDIA drivers. So first we're going to go ahead and unpack DDU. So just go ahead and run it. It's going to extract it to this NVIDIA driver pack. So once you're done extracting DDU, we basically want to navigate to the actual driver. We want to go to right click it, press extract files, press OK. Um, basically what we're going to do from this step onwards is we're going to basically be stripping down NVIDIA drivers to the bare minimum. Um, but do note that if you're doing this, you're not going to be able to use uh, GeForce Experience or any of the tools associated with it, like Ansel. Basically, this is literally just going to be the, this, the raw display.driver and just nothing else. So to strip down the drivers, um, basically press Control a uh, deselect display.driver, deselect GeForce Experience, deselect um, all these down here, and then just delete everything else. You can do this using other tools such as NVSlimmer. Um, I just like doing it manually because it takes like two seconds. There's no need to install those types of software on your computer. Um, again, this works for every single driver version. Um, I just have to use this driver version specifically because I'm on the new RTX 3080. This is the only driver currently available. Um, I'll link two different driver versions I'd recommend installing if you're on like a 10,000 series or 2,000 series. Um, I think it's like 451.58 uh, or something along those lines. In any case, I'll just have these both um, included in the actual NVIDIA driver pack. And you can basically just choose whichever driver version you'd want. Um, but yeah, those three drivers have basically been the best performing uh, for me so far in terms of both like DPC latency, FPS, and just overall um, responsiveness. Um, so yeah, I'll just have those linked in the description. It'd be super simple. Um, and then we're going to boot into safe mode in Windows. To do that, we have to do Windows key R, MS, config. Go to boot, click safe boot, click apply, press OK, and then press restart. So when I first recorded this, I forgot to mention, um, you guys need to make sure you know what your actual local account password is. Not your Microsoft account password if you use that to sign in, your actual local account password. Because otherwise, you're going to be locked out of Windows permanently if you don't know your actual password. There's no way to actually disable safe mode unless you sign in first. So again, just please make sure you remember your actual local account password if you set one that is. Um, otherwise, you're going to break your Windows install, you're going to have to reinstall it all over again. And this is actually something that occurred to me a while ago, and it really fucked me over. So again, please remember your local account password um, before you continue. Okay, so sorry for the uh, scuffed video quality. I'm recording this on my phone because once you're in safe mode, you can actually locally record to OBS. Um, so yeah, anyways, um, once you're in the safe mode, basically you want to navigate to wherever you have the, um, the NVIDIA driver pack installed. Um, so I have it here. Um, basically, we'll navigate to the DDU folder, double click it. Basically what this is going to do is going to run a display driver on installer. Basically what this does is cleans up all your old NVIDIA drivers. And um, because by default, the actual NVIDIA drivers don't actually clean up themselves. They leave like residue files of like uh, drivers or um, like registry keys. And those cause conflicts and lead to a lot of issues on the line. So every time you were doing a fresh like uh, NVIDIA driver install, you want to always make sure you use DDU um, in safe mode. And that'll help alleviate a lot of issues a lot of people face. Uh, especially if you're installing a new graphics card. So anyways, um, basically it's really easy. You just want to go to here, go to GPU, go to NVIDIA, and then literally just click press clean and restart, and you'll be good to go. Uh, make sure one one last thing you need to do before that is I want to navigate to um, Windows key MS config. And make sure you want to go to boot, and make sure uh, safe boot is turned off. Actually, I forgot to do this beforehand. But yeah, I recommend doing that actually before you uh, do this DDU, otherwise it'd be a lot more difficult. Because um, by default, uh, MS config doesn't actually turn off safe boot. So make sure you do that, otherwise you're just going to reboot into safe boot again. So yeah, once you're back in the normal Windows, basically we'll navigate to wherever you strip the um, initial drivers at. Double click it, and simply navigate to setup, and uh, basically go through the setup process like you normally would. So yeah, basically want to go click uh, NVIDIA graphics driver, where you continue, go to custom, click next. Make sure you click perform clean installation, press next, and I'll go through the actual standard graphics install. And yeah, that's all I have to do for this part. Now that you restarted and you've installed the uh, NVIDIA drivers, basically, we're going to navigate to the NVIDIA control panel, and we're basically going to go ahead and uh, show you all the settings that I actively use. And do note that all the settings I'm showing you work with every single graphics card, uh, at least every single NVIDIA graphics card, and it works through every like Windows version, or um, just like any driver version you're using. You can just go ahead and copy everything that I have to a T. So we're going to start at the bottom here. We'll go to adjust video image settings. Set these both to uh, use NVIDIA settings. Same with the uh, just video color settings. Click use with NVIDIA settings. 
change it from limited to full. Press apply. Uh, you don't have to worry about this unless you have multiple monitors at the same time. I just have one for the sake of this video. Now G-Sync, um, by default G-Sync is already enabled. So um, if you don't want G-Sync, you just basically click this, press apply like you would with all the other settings. I personally love G-Sync, so I'm just gonna leave it enabled. Um, however, if you don't like the input lag that it comes with, even though it's only like one to two milliseconds, uh, you can just go ahead and disable it here. Um, you can skip this. Well, actually for this part, I would highly recommend just setting it to no scaling. Um, if you guys didn't know, uh, generally speaking, uh, any form of scaling introduces some sort of input lag, even if it's display-based scaling, which is better than GPU scaling. Um, it still creates input lag at some sort of level because it's another layer that the graphics processing unit has to engage with. So I would just highly recommend just going ahead and setting no scaling, especially if you're not playing any games on like 4x3 or um, any low resolutions. If you're playing literally everything native 16x9, just turn to no scaling and you'll be fine. Um, however, if you're like a CS player and need it in 4x3, just go ahead and set it in aspect ratio and then make sure you have perform scaling on set to display. Do not have it set to GPU if you're using scaling as GPU scaling causes more input lag than display. Um, I'll link a couple of UFO Blair Busters articles on this if you guys are curious on like the actual science behind it. But yeah, just for the sake of this video, just make sure you just leave it on no scaling. You're gonna have a better time. So for a setup digital audio, skip this. Um, you don't need it. View HDCP, skip this. Rotate display. If you want to set your secondary monitor to like portrait or landscape, do it through here. Or you can do it through the window settings. I'd recommend doing it through drivers themselves. It's just more clean. Um, this is a super important one too. Make sure you have use NVIDIA settings selected. And this is where we can turn digital environments up or down. I personally like to leave it on 60%. Personal preference, so just whatever you want to. If you want to make games more vibrant, just turn that all the way up. Especially if you're playing competitive games, it helps a lot. So change resolution, this is arguably one of the most important tabs. Um, this is basically where you set your monitor to make sure it's using the full dynamic range. And this is where you actually set your monitor's refresh rate. Um, personally, a lot of people actually don't, a lot of people actually buy like 240 hertz monitors and just never change it. So please make sure you're running at your native refresh rate and not anything lower. Cause sometimes it just glitches out and sets it to like 60 hertz, even if you're running on 240 hertz. So yeah, please make sure this is at its max value that it possibly can be. Next we're going to navigate to configure surround physics, uh, change the processor to your actual graphics card itself, so whatever that may be. Now we're going to navigate to the manage 3D settings. So. Um, a lot of this, a lot of these don't actually really do much. Um, it's mainly only a couple core settings that actually uh, increase your performance a lot. A lot of games override a lot of these settings. So for these, if you actually want to be super, if you're running a, like a super potato laptop, just go ahead and set these off. Go ahead and set these off. It's basically turning off anti-async globally. A lot of games do override these settings anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Kudos, make sure you have all selected. That's very important. Uh, DSR, turn that off, unless you're like using retro games, then you can turn that on. Low latency mode, now, this is arguably the most important setting on here. Uh, basically, the rule of thumb is, if you're in a, using a, if you're on a super low end GPU and you're always cap, and you have like more than 98% GPU usage in most games, set this to ultra as, this, as what this does, is basically decreases the input lag when your graphics card is being heavily utilized. So like above 97 to 98% utilization, uh, basically cuts that input lag by like roughly half. Um, however, if you're in like a non-GPU intensive scenario, it's like you're only like you're below 97% utilization. Uh, set this to on as you'll get better frame times. However, if you're on a G-Sync monitor, just leave this ultra at all times because what this does is when it pairs with G-Sync and uh, vertical sync, um, basically helps to reduce the input lag caused by G-Sync itself. Battle No Nonsense has a really good video up on his channel explaining um, how it works. I'm not going to go too into depth here, that's just the blanket rules I recommend you using personally. Uh, the video will be linked in the description below though if you're more curious on how it works and the ins and out of it. So the next setting is the max frame rate. Um, I personally leave this off, I just set my frame rates uh, per game basis. If you want to just do, if you're lazy and you just want to do global frame rate limiter if you're on a G-Seq monitor, um, just set it to like 3 below your refresh rate. So I'm at a 165Hz panel right now, so I would set it to 162, press OK. I'm not going to do that here. Um, because I like to do it on a per game basis again. Um, so yeah, again, that's personal preference. Next, monitor technology of a G-Sync monitor. So set this to G-Sync. If you have a fixed refresh rate, set this to fixed refresh rate. Uh, do not turn on ULMB as it's super buggy. And for most monitors you would, that have integrated backlight strobing, such as like BenQ's Diac, um, you don't do it, through, you, you do it through the actual monitor itself. So yeah, just make sure this is on G-Sync or fixed refresh rate. Another very, very important setting is the OpenGL running GPU. If you have a uh, like iGPU integrated, 
um, off your processor. Sometimes this defaults to the uh, CPU's graphics card for whatever reason. Um, that, that obviously will hamper your performance like crazy. Uh, so yeah, make sure this is on your actual graphics card itself. And for power management mode, make sure this is set to prefer maximum performance. Um, make sure it's set to highest available. Uh, make sure quality is highest performance. Um, there's actually like no visual difference between these two. Uh, this is tends to perform slightly better. Um, this you can set it to clamp if you want um, slightly better image quality. Allow has better performance, so I just personally leave it on allow. It's like there's barely any difference to be honest. Um, it's more of a personal preference setting. Threat, opti threat optimization. This is another important one. For almost all games, this improves frames. However, there's some games where this performs weirdly, like Tarkov. Um, so you have to do it on like per game basis, but generally I just like to leave it on on. It has the best performance globally. Um, so you have to like research and experiment um, with like frame time graphs and stuff, but generally just always leave this on on. A vertical sync. Um, so this is a pretty huge setting. If you're on a fixer refresh rate monitor, just turn it off as it obviously causes a lot of input lag. Um, like upwards of 40 milliseconds. If, um, however, if you're on a G-Sync monitor like I am, you actually need vertical sync to be enabled for G-Sync to operate properly. Um, so make sure you have it on if you have a G-Sync monitor. If you do not have a G-Sync monitor, turn it off. So yeah, once that's all done, just go ahead and press apply. It should be done with this section. One thing I forgot to mention in the actual NVIDIA control panel is to make sure you go to desktop, click enable developer settings, go to manage GPU performance counters, press allow access to GPU performance counters to all users, Press apply. Um, basically, what this helps to do is um, basically gives you more control to all the NVIDIA driver settings to all the users. Um, this can really help, especially if you're having issues um, like doing custom resolutions. Uh, basically, if you were like running something like uh, four four by three, for example, for CS:GO, uh, sometimes if you have this to restricted, it won't let you actually do it for whatever reason. If you're having weird permission issues with like custom resolutions, this can help a lot. So yeah, just make sure you do this. So now we're done with the uh, actual NVIDIA driver section. We're gonna navigate to a little tool called MSI mode tool. Basically what this does is it sets your um, actual communication line between your graphics card, your motherboard, and the CPU into more streamlined uh, fashion. And actually by default, I guess, I don't know if this works for all the new drivers or just the RTX 3080 series, it's enabled by default. Um, so basically to enable it, you just click the MSI mode button, go to interrupt priority and set to high and then press apply and restart computer. That's all you have to do. Make sure though, you do not press MSI mode for any of these other options as you will literally brick your entire windows install. Um, because a lot of these other ones, drivers are not meant to be put in MSI mode. If there are in MSI mode by default, just don't touch them. Um, just yeah, make sure you're only messing with the actual uh, graphics driver. I find this is kind of an optional step, but I find this helps reduce your uh, latency values and latency mod. It just overall makes things feel a little bit more snappier. Um, but again, totally optional. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you don't have to do it. Now for the next step, this is a really small thing. We're using NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Scroll down here and we go to Common. You're going to see this CUDA Force P2 state. Make sure this is turned to off. Basically, the reason you're doing that is because by default, if you have um, P2 states enabled, and if you're doing any like recording through OBS, um, when using the NVENC recorder, it actually downclocks your memory while gaming. So I think by like uh, like half gigahertz or something like that. Um, I haven't actually tested the numbers on the new cards. That that it pretty much downclocked my old 1080 Ti around like a thousand megahertz. So it gives you a huge performance loss um, when you're like recording and playing games at the same time. So just make sure that's disabled. This is optional. If you don't do any end bank recording and you literally just play games, you don't have to mess with this setting whatsoever. Now for the very last step, we're gonna be doing a little something. Uh, we're gonna be using a script that I wrote. It's called rebuild performance counters. Basically what performance counters are, are a metric that Windows uses to reference um, different performance metrics that it uses in combined with the um, NVIDIA drivers that basically reference each other. Uh, that's like the super lame explanation for it. I'll leave an article on like the actual Windows explanation of it from Microsoft themselves. Uh, but basically what the script does is it runs command prompt and it um, rebuilds performance counters. So yeah, it's literally just this little script. Um, super simple, does it twice. You'll see why in a second. Um, but yeah, basically, because over time I found, especially when you're doing like fresh installs, performance counters tend to corrupt things and it can cause a lot of weird issues. Um, that are kind of unexplainable, and I found this helps to resolve them. So yeah, just make sure you're running this as an administrator. Just right-click, run as administrator. 
And basically what this does is it rebuilds performance counters. So this time it didn't give me an error, but if you get an error in one of them, that means generally speaking, it's corrupted. That's why I haven't run twice. When I built it this time, it didn't give me an error, but if you get like an error, for example, on the first time it attempts to rebuild performance counters, that generally means like something corrupted. So um, yeah, that's why I haven't run twice. So it basically refreshes it twice and make sure you're all good. So yeah, that's literally all I have to do for that step. And yeah, that's about it. So this is me for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, need help with anything, uh, just let me know in the comments below. I'm going to have all the download links in the description below. Um, so yeah, if this helped you in any way though, please don't forget to drop a like, comment, subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. And yeah, see you guys on the next one. Peace.